For this quick example, we're going to look at debug view modes, how exactly they work, how you can access them in the interface, and how exactly this interface or this nice little example I'm showing you is constructed. So we have the debug view modes. We have a bunch of triggers, which are the green pieces. And all of these are named. It's kind of like a tombstone. We have the albedo tombstone and normal proxy. All of these things denote the type of view mode that you will cause to activate when you walk into the trigger. So we're going to go ahead and walk into these so we have an idea of what they do. To start out, I walk through this. This enables them. So if I walk to Albedo first, you'll notice that all of the information except for the color values are completely removed. There's no shadowing, there's no specularity, gloss, normal, nothing. And when I walk back out, everything comes back. The same could be said for normal. I walk in. Now, this is something that you're not going to see a lot with normals, but the gun and his hand actually have quite a bit on them. You can see the skin with the pores, you can see the jacket ruffles, and you can see the gun itself has a lot of normal information in it for lighting values. And for the last little example, we'll walk into the proxy. And in this, we can see that we have proxy information. It's all this green. And everything that isn't triangulated actually is a proxy mesh that has been generated by the physics system, so it's highly optimized, while something like this is not. It's not a primitive, and therefore it is more expensive. If I press F1, I can escape to third-person view, and now you can notice the live skeleton on the player with capsules, as well as the large capsules that encapsulate the player himself. And that right there is for basic object collision, and then also the one at the bottom is actually for vegetation collision. So these are the different types of proxies that you can see. So I'm going to go ahead and escape out of that now that we've basically described what it is. And you can see that we kind of stayed outside of it. So I need to go back in, hop in, and hop back out, and we'll be back to normal. And that's because it's just basically triggering console variables. So if we go into the flow graph, I'm going to right-click and go to the flow graph. We're able to see exactly how this is set up. And it's a simple console variable that is a G buffer that's debugging. And you can do it based on a number. And in this value, it would be albedo as the value of 4. So this is all the way down the line, the same thing that's triggered. Next, what we want to do is actually show you how you can access this in the interface, which is typically what people will do. So if we go up here and we right click and we go to view modes, we now have all of these toggles themselves sitting up here on the top. So you can see that there's the debug. We click that, that's the normal. So this is just something that is a debug view mode that you can basically analyze your scene and make sure there are any errors based on the different modes that you're viewing.